we just came back from the power plant and I decided to give all of the electricity to Edgewater. So now I see everyone just huddle up against the campfire over here, not knowing what to do. Let me talk to a couple of them and see what's on their Home mind. Home is where the heart is. Marauders took that saying a little too literally. Hmm. Let me speak to Thomas to let him know that I collected all of the books for him. Everybody keeps staring at me. It's not my fault the power's dead. Today's your lucky day, Thomas. I've got one of those data pads you wanted. No kidding. Really? Well, which one? Part one, founded in the community center archives. Look at that. Building a computing machine out of spectrum potatoes, a primer. I'm just glad it survived all these years. I appreciate you going through all that trouble. In fact, I put aside something special on the off chance that somebody'd search out those data pads for me. Hold on, I've got more for you. Well, don't keep me in suspense. Part two, founded in the cannery. Ain't that just ironical? If I'd worked a little longer back at the cannery, I might have found this myself. Two whole data pads? Be still my beating heart. Oh, almost forgot your payment. Hold on, I've got more for you. Well, don't keep me in suspense. The elusive part three. Someone stashed it away inside the old geothermal plant. The geothermal plant? Now that is just incredible. You really went exploring down there? Adelaide always told us it was swarming with hostile mechanicals. That's a complete set. All three parts. I'm gonna be the greatest engineer Halcyon's ever seen. Um, aside from you, Ms. Parvati, I swear. I'll do you proud. I'm glad we could help, Thomas. I've been saving something for you. Uh, just a little contraption I found. Should fit right into your outfit. I should go. Alright, let me just talk to... Grace here. I don't know what you did to talk some sense into Zoe, but I appreciate it. I'll leave you be. Okay, so I assumed Adelaide is in there, so let me face her. I know she's angry. Question is, how angry is she with me? That's the thing about growing old. Your eyes start to fail. Elsewise, I would have seen you for the snake that you are. Chopped Damn. you into pieces and roasted Damn. you on a spit. Damn, Adelaide. This is all you're doing. Cutting off my power, killing off my garden. Without refrigeration, my food will spoil and my flock will starve. I want to ask you this in private, away from the eyes of my flock, so they do not see me lose my temper. Tell me, why did you do it? Oh, uh, Lord, what should I say? Um, um, this isn't personal, Adelaide. I need your power regulator. You killed my garden, destroyed my community, sentenced my flock to a lifetime of slavery in Edgewater for a power regulator. Well, shit, I wish it was personal. Go talk to Grace and Thomas. Look them in the eye and tell them their life here is over, and the only thing left to do is go back to Edgewater. This is now your responsibility. And you tell Reed Thompson that I will never return to Edgewater. I would rather die among my flowers than live under his management. What happened to you, Adelaide? All this anger had to come from somewhere. My son worked in that cannery. When the plague started coming, he was one of the first to fall sick. We had a store of medicine locked away, but Reed refused to treat him. Wow. Said my boy didn't deserve treatment. He ain't shit Said for the medicine that. would have been wasted on him. So I buried my boy in the cemetery, 
gathered my belongings and left. That's as much of the story as you need to hear. I'm willing to deal with Reed for you. You offering to cross Reed off, huh? This some sort of twisted reparation for what you've done? Or are you just looking for a chance to sow some chaos? Kill Reed if you must, or talk him into leaving if you can. He and I are not sharing the same four walls together. Reed isn't going to just leave his post, Adelaide. I, I'll need some help convincing him. Tell Reed that I can make his people healthy again. I can end their plague. Start a new garden right in the cannery. Three square meals for every man and woman in Edgewater. Tell him how I've made the Vale bloom again. The soil has whispered its secrets to me, and I alone know how to breathe life back into the earth. The secret is human corpses. What? I've been grinding them up in my fertilizer for years. Oh my god, that's fucking nasty. Worker. Don't matter much to me. That is so the fucking human nasty. Body is rich with nutrients. I am so happy I didn't eat from you. What the fuck? That's disgusting. If I were in a better mood, I might be inclined to try and change your mind. Enough talk. Yuck. Let's get the fuck out of here. I'm disgusted already. I'm at Reed's office right now, and Loki, I do want Adelaide in this office because she did say herself that she's able to feed people. And honestly, she could be a potential, a potential better leader than what Reed has been this whole time. This is a fine day, friend. Power flows through our town like a cool stream of water. I trust Adelaide's people have seen their way to reason. So, when can I expect them back at their posts? I spoke to Adelaide. She won't come back so long as you're here. Then we are at an impasse. Stewardship over this town has been entrusted to me by Spacer's choice. I am not perfect. I have made my share of mistakes. You call those mistakes? I have done my best for this town. No, you're an asshole, but okay. Uh, you let Adelaide's son die. Her son got sick with plague a couple years back. Company never gave us enough medication to treat the whole town. So I had to choose, you see. Adelaide's child, or someone else's. She's never forgiven me. I don't expect she ever will. <laughs> you say you're, you've done your best, but all I see is a town falling to pieces. I have been holding this town together with both hands. You can't just expect me to leave. I'm a spacer's choice man. My father was a spacer's choice man. Edgewater may not look like much to some buttoned-up freelancer. Oh, wow. But it is my home. What a backhand compliment. That's so cute. Adeline's people aren't getting sick with the plague, Reed. I don't believe you. Plague's a reality of life. Best treatment is a good work ethic. Have you people ever eaten an actual vegetable? The very notion is just grotesque. A raw vegetable? Why don't you just ask me to go chew the bark off of a tree? You ignorant ass. We are ass Spacer's ass Choice oh Saltuna God. Cannery. We eat Saltuna here, and only Saltuna. I'm pretty sure it's your food that's making you sick. You need Adeline's garden. I don't understand. You say Adelaide's growing her own food. Yes, But that she should is. not be possible. The soil's gone sour. Company said as much. Our own botanists couldn't grow decent crops for us. So the company got rid of them and shut down the greenhouse. Adeline's found a way to grow food. She'll come back if you step down. You will excuse me for being skeptical. How exactly is Adelaide growing crops in barren soil? She's been using human corpses in her fertilizer. Adelaide has been using dead bodies in her fertilizer? That's yes. Come to think of it, that's a stroke of brilliance. Oh, you're disgusting too. What a remarkably efficient solution. Recycling Spacer's Choice property long after its date of expiration. 
I was wondering about those missing bodies in Silas's cemetery. This town needs Adelaide. She won't come back so long as you're here, Reed. So Adelaide wants me gone. Trade my life for the life of the town. You understand what she's doing. If I leave town, I am as good as dead. If I stay, Edgewater will die of attrition. Adelaide has discovered some secret cure for the plague, and she is holding my town ransom. <laughs> wow, you really are, are actually debating about this. You know what? Do what you want, Reed. I'm not the one running this town to the ground. You're right. I am being obstinate. If the best thing I can do for this town is to stand down, then stand down I shall. If Adelaide's found a way to feed her people and cure the plague, then she deserves this office more than I do. I won't stand in her way. My life here is ended. Give me a little time to settle my affairs. I'm sure Adelaide will be glad to see the back of me. What are your plans? A couple months ago, I might have put in for a transfer. It's a big colony. Spacer's Choice has other towns. Now, I couldn't show my face in any of them. Why not? No such thing as an honorable resignation. Suppose I could find a place outside the walls, or put in for early retirement. You won't last a day outside the walls, you know. I don't know. I could see myself lasting a week. This can't be easy for you. I have always tried to do right by my town. It has never been easy. Take care. All right. Pravari. Let's go to Adelaide. I think you did the rightest thing you could sending the power back to Edgewater. A lot of people would have suffered otherwise. People I care for. Even if they didn't care much for me. You are so nice and so kind. Like... I'm actually grateful that you're my companion. All right, let's head out. Okay, so hopefully he is not mad at me after I accidentally hit him, so. Okay, so far so good. When I was little, we'd get freighters in every- You gotta be kidding me. No, are you serious? Oh, come on. She no, killed okay. him. Uh, that's the first quest that I failed. Damn it. Okay, listen, I'm glad that you saved my life, but let's get the fuck out of here. All right, I talked to Reed. Now I'm back here again to deliver some interesting news. I really hope she is willing to leave now. Look at that. The snakes come back. Okay, I deserve that. I talked Reed into leaving. Come back to Edgewater, Adelaide. I never thought I'd see the day that Reed Thompson abandoned his post. Suppose we all have a breaking point. Suppose it's time our flock made our way back to Edgewater. We must tend to what remains of the town and carry on with our lives as best we may. You're vexing to me, you know? Injuring us with one hand, helping us with the other. Here, I'm giving you something to leave us be. Thank it's a you. ransom. You oh. understand, not a reward. Oh. Edgewater's better off with you running the place. You're telling me you did all this just to put me in charge of Edgewater? Stranger, you are some kind of twisted. I might turn that old cannery into a garden. Got ourselves a whole cemetery bursting with bodies. I need some time to gather my personals. Long walk back to Edgewater. Got a considerable burden to carry. Take care. All right, got the power regulator. So at this point, I'm on my way back to the ship.
Sorry. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out what to do, is all. Adelaide tells me she's moving back to Edgewater. Adelaide said that? Was mm -hmm. she sober at the time? I never imagined she'd step foot in Edgewater long as Reed ran the town. Something must have changed in Edgewater. Adelaide's good as family. If she's going back, so are we. I should go. Never liked Reed much. Can't say I'm sorry he's gone. Hmm, I agree. I'll leave you be, though. All right, and I guess, well, one last person to say goodbye to. How do you expect me to enjoy the adventures of the Masked Marketeer with no power? Yeah, I'm not saying goodbye to you. You're annoying. Here it is, my ship. And now that I have a power regulator, I'm actually ready to leave. I mean, this town was okay and all, but I know there's other places that I could be exploring. And plus, I gotta help that scientist out too. Is this your too. ship? Yeah. Oh my star, she is just so handsome. Does she have a name yet? What's her drive model? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Listen to me babbling. When I was in Edgewater, I dreamed of flying on a real ship, working on a real engine, belonging to a proper crew. I'm the only decent mechanic Edgewater's got, but every time I think of going back, I get this sinking feeling. You've never been in a ship before? I've worked on the occasional supply coach in need of repairs. Once I built a little model craft out of spare parts, but Mr. Thompson found out, and I had to take it apart. What I want to ask you something, and you can say no. Okay. But can I come with you? I could tend to your engine. I know my G-valves for my catalyzers, and I can keep your ship singing. And if you ever need a pair of eyes watching your back, I can do that too. What do you think? You just met me. Why would you want to go into space with a stranger? Yeah. I've been thinking about that. Edgewater was on the verge of collapse before you showed up. You sent them power, and now the town might see another season. And you talked Miss McDevitt into coming back to town. Maybe one day, Edgewater will have a garden where that cannery once stood. You ain't exactly a stranger anymore. You've done some kindness hereabouts. I wouldn't mind following somebody like that. You know what? I'll be glad to have you along. Pick a cabin, it's yours. Yes! I mean, <laughs> thanks. You won't regret this, ma'am. Captain. I can call you Captain now. Ha! <laughs> I got a captain. She is so adorable. All right. Let's head right in. Well, I certainly am looking forward to flying on a ship named the Unreliable. I'll just head upstairs and claim a room. All right, you do that. And yes, the name is pretty ironic. Captain, I have detected that Edgewater's power supply is now optimal. I applaud your willingness to invest your time in the local community. What can I do for you, Captain? I have a power regulator. Do you know how to install a power regulator? Yeah, I know what I'm doing. Outstanding, Captain. Your aptitude for engineering will prove invaluable in the event of another catastrophic engine failure. I Our hope engine not. Our engine room is located behind you, across the cargo bay, up the ladders. I'll be back. Alright, so engine room is this way, which means Parvati can definitely help me. In fact, I think that's her right now. Okay, so just put in this bad boy here. Oh shit. Oof. Damn, alright. Let's uh let's go. I'm ecstatic. Okay, so do not jump off the second story balcony. You will get hurt. We'll remember that. What can I do for you, Captain? I've installed the power regulator. All systems are operating within acceptable parameters. I am prepared to bring the unreliable into low altitude orbit. This should prove an adequate test of our flight capabilities. Well, let's get out of here then. 
Oh shit, we're finally out and about. Wow. This is nice. I can't believe it. On to the next adventure. We have received a communication request from Dr. Phidias Wells. Good, I've been waiting to hear from him. Ah, there you are. Hale and hearty and captain of your own ship. I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. Shame about her former captain. Horrible way to die. Mm. How are you feeling, by the way? I lost track of you in that cave back there. Experiencing any uh, unnatural drippage? Perfectly normal side effect of thawing, I assure you. I've been feeling a little lightheaded. Also, I can slow down time. Oh, that, yes, um, that's probably permanent. I won't oh. worry about it, though. I'm sure you're fine. What you saw in Emerald Vale is happening all across the colony. Food shortages, lack of supplies, and basic necessities. We're dying. The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. You need to get to Stellar Bay on Monarch. I have contacts there. They'll help me, uh, help us, find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. Gladys Kelly, lovely woman, runs a cozy little black marketing outfit on the ground breaker. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. Okay, so... So... Wait, 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 wait. Why do I need a nav key to land on a planet? Strictly speaking, Monarch is a moon. Terraformed badly. And almost completely lawless. You'll that, love it. Mm, Captains don't fly their own ships, you see. Your navigation terminal handles the, uh, you know, navigation. Think of a nav key as a set of flight instructions. The board's been confiscating nav keys for Stellar Bay, so we must rely on unconventional means of acquisition. Hence, Miss Gladys called Kelly. Right, the black uh, marketeer. Gladys and I have been doing business for years. Her smuggling credentials are unimpeachable. If anyone can get you a key to Monarch, it's her. I don't like the idea of working with a criminal. Criminals? Goodness, no. Smuggling is a perfectly legitimate business venture. If misappropriating board property is a crime, well then, throw me in Tartarus. Plenty of ways to make money in Halcyon, you know. Not all are above board. Oh, <laughs> above board, above the Halcyon board. Get it? Mm-hmm. You're easily impressed with yourself, huh? Well, yes. Someone has to be, after all. What's stopping me from just, I don't know, leaving Halcyon altogether? Without a skip drive? Good luck. You'll be dead before you make it to the nearest star. Look, I admire your optimism, but the sad truth is you're stuck here. You, me, and the rest of this colony. We're all skating precariously around the edge of oblivion together. None of us are leaving Halcyon alive, so we may as well make it a better place. And we can start by reviving the hope. Fine, I'll go have a word with Gladys. Excellent. I'll send her a wireless. Let her know you're coming. By the way, I gave Captain Hawthorne a disguise apparatus of my own design. Cutting-edge technology years ahead of its time. I call it the Holographic Shroud. I'm sure it will prove remarkably useful to you. You'll find it in the captain's quarters. You want to explain what a holographic shroud is? Marvelous device. I'm quite proud of myself. The shroud changes the user's appearance to mimic that of another. It has limits. First generation technology, you see. But promising. Exciting to see it in use at last. Very simply, the holographic shroud uses biometric information contained on standard identity cartridges to generate a holographic projection around you. You mentioned this thing has limitations. Only stands up to a casual scrutiny. Use it too long, bound to flicker, blur, something like that. Movement makes it more likely. 
Best used in moderation. When you see guards in your path, you can't sneak past, for example. Maintain your distance. Act normal. No running, no jumping. Don't draw their attention. If they pay attention, they're more likely to notice flaws in the hologram. Okay, well, I'll put it to good use. Thanks, Phineas. Excellent. I'll contact you once you've found a way to get to Stellar Bay. If you have any questions, come see me in my lab. And remember, don't trust the board. They'll try to win you over with promises of wealth and power, but it's a lie. The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. If we don't put a stop to them, they're going to run this colony to the ground. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, please select a destination on your navigation terminal. Got it. Okay, so after looking at the objection, the objective, we got to go to Marnock. So let's travel here, I guess. Okay. Message from Dr. Wells. We'd like to congratulate you on finding a route to Monarch. Put them on the screen. Cascadia is utterly seething with dangerous, highly aggressive creatures, more than capable of tearing you limb from limb. Damn. You'd have Why to be I a here? lunatic to land in Cascadia, and I'm reasonably certain I tested your brain for incipient signs of insanity. Trust me, talk to Gladys Cult Kelly. I'm going to fight my way overland to Cell Bay. Tell me what you need. You'll need to speak with Hiram Blythe. He's known as the information broker, and for good reason. If anyone knows where I can find those chemicals, it's Hiram. I need those chemicals to revive the Hope's colonists. They can help us fight back against the board. They can help us set things right. If we don't put a stop to the board, they're going to drive this colony toward a complete societal collapse. You'll see what I mean when you arrive on Monarch. You sound like you've been to Monarch. <laughs> no, never. Monarch is a hotbed of political activity. I can't imagine why Hiram set up shop there. Cuisine, perhaps? Oh, well, a hotbed of political activity sounds like fun. I certainly wouldn't call it boring, especially if your idea of fun involves navigating a hostile biosphere populated by carnivorous monsters. You'll want to hire the services of a skilled guide. I recommend a hunter by the name of Nioka. Frequents the drinking establishments of Stellar Bay. Very hard to miss. Once you have everything you need, make your way to Hiram Blythe's compound. All right, I'm off. Best of luck. Everyone on the Hope is counting on you. Captain, an unusual wavelength is coming through Monarch's aether wave frequencies. The Eternal is in us all. The OSI would have you believe that your place in society, indeed in the universe, is preordained. A man who works in the mines of Hephaestus, coating his lungs in mercury dust for naught but a few bits a night. This fate is set in stone? When he dies young, coughing up black blood, his part in the grand plan? No, I say. Greatness is in everyone. Not just those so fortunate as to have been born into prosperity. That was unexpected and odd. I agree. What was that? Analyzing the subtextual ordering. I believe it was a type of sermon, Captain. Very zealous in origin. Okay, well, I'll be back. Let me get the device that Phineas made for me. Huh, Edgewater. Nice. I believe this is it. Yep. Alright, so let's go to Gladys. Can't believe it. I'm on my way to my next adventure. And obviously I'm picking these two, so let's go. Thank you for watching this episode. 
This is Lover of Ladies, and I'll see you next week.